guys after subscribing to this channel please make sure that you also press the bell icon so that no notification no new video of mine any educational video is missed by anybody all right so good evening and welcome to the class everybody uh, like i said before it's a very very interesting class tonight we are going to be discussing about the insulin regime the different kinds of insulin available and the different uh, uh, you know um, um, action mode of action when does it start when does it peak how long does it stay what do you mean by regular insulin what do you mean by uh, you know long acting short acting uh, intermediate acting insulin what exactly they are and uh, how to titrate different doses during labor and during uh, and after delivery and of course during the antenatal period at the very outset i'd like to tell you not to be very over ambitious even despite me telling you all these things what i am giving you right now is what you should answer in the viva what i'm giving you right now is what you write down in the theory notes but what i'm giving you right now is not what you're going to practice because you alone as gynecologist never in your uh, you know uh, career should you attempt it yourself insulin is a very tricky thing in your uh, the management of diabetes is also a very tricky thing if you chronically uh do a bad or wrong management the patient can have different kinds of complications uh, not only the patient but mostly the baby so a very tight control and a very uh, proper control of sugar has to be done along with managing many other sequelae that can happen so please be mindful of the fact that <clears throat> uh insulin whatever i'm teaching you today as regimes or modes of action or what kind of different insulin that you have please make sure that you're not giving it to your patient by this book regime okay this is only for your passing your exams right uh what you do in uh, practical life always do it with, with conjunction with a endocrinologist or a physician correct let's start now i'm first trying to give you a very i'll be building it building your concepts from here let me just tell you about the different kinds of insulin available and then we'll talk how to uh, titrate it so let's start with uh, the short acting insulin so you have a lot of short acting or rapid acting insulin you require them very uh, highly so and why why do you think you require short acting why don't i give a long acting uh, you know insulin so that you know it is long acting you require lesser doses it doesn't cause sudden hypoglycemia it uh, it is mostly you know ranging slowly over the starting slowly over there is nothing no episode of sudden hypoglycemia in the patient which we are very scared of so why do we require this short acting or a rapid acting insulin come on guys uh, all of you should be there in the chat room and i need everybody's participation because i'll be asking a lot of questions to you please tell me why do we require uh, the short acting insulin if at all why don't i give like i said intermediate acting or a long acting insulin so that i am also happy the patient is also happy correct so please be active in the chat room everyone i hope you all know how to be uh, available in the chat box uh, all of you who are there on the telegram channel through which you are uh, entering obviously the class there's a pinned message there please click on that pinned message you will automatically enter the chat room that's very very vital because that's your only source of communication with me like some of you write down in the whatsapp also that's fine with me but uh, it's always good uh, when we when we run the class that we can have too see uh, short acting insulin is required for a sudden surge in sugar you know that it's going to act within an hour it start it should start acting in an hour so what you want is uh, also a sudden surge to be controlled when you have any carb, carb meal any meal which is loaded with carbs which happens to be any of your meal you are absolutely right uh, uh, kaushik was it uh, about the sudden pp rise postprandial rise uh, yeah so what happens is that there is a sudden surge of sugar in the body which is not met with if a you know intermediate acting or a long acting insulin is given because it has a very lower range of uh, management and this spike is not handled by this long acting insulin it's like a sustained release okay the same dose over a longer period of time so it doesn't help you so there'll be times when you know the sugar is touching 250 276 308 and you have nothing to combat you cannot give anything that is where these short acting insulin they help so you have regular insulin u100 and you have regular insulin u500 there are two different kinds just see that the time of onset of both of them is around an hour basically 30 minutes but you can keep it in an hour and the maximum effect that is achieved in 
three hours, right? This one, this one, it stays for eight hours, as you can see from here. Okay, it stays over for uh, around eight hours. And this one, it stays up to 24 hours, is almost as, you know, long as a long acting insulin. But yes, we call it regular, or we call it rapidly acting or uh, uh, short acting because it starts, the action starts very fast. Because the moment the sugar goes, inside your body you take a carb meal suddenly the sugar rises there right when sudden sugar rises there we need an insulin to combat that and that is the purpose which is being solved by that so uh, yeah one very important thing is sub severe hypoglycemia can occur 24 hours after the initial dose so you have to be on a lookout specifically for the regular insulin don't think that specifically this u500 it has a longer action so if you give it intertwined with your uh, long acting insulin suddenly there'll be a culmination of effect so uh, that is why I say you have to involve the diabetologist as well. Then you have even these insulin, insulin aspart, insulin lispro, insulin glucelin. These are certain insulin which are all rapid acting. I have brought them and I've got a very nice table towards the end which will compare all of these. Basically try to understand, uh, I don't know, uh, you know, this question can be asked in theory that uh, describe in detail the uh, short acting insulin available in the market. And uh, with respect to the pharmacokinetic profile, that can be easily asked. Because from my point of view, I think this much you should know. Right? So insulin as part, insulin Lispro, very, very common, you know, insulin. So you should at least know that it should be taken this as part C, 5 to 10 minutes before the meal because then its action is, you know, ready to start. Nowadays, you have insulin pumps also available, right? So these pumps, you know, they give a fixed dose of insulin. Uh, at a particular uh, span of time. Intelligent uh, insulin pumps are also now available, which gauge the blood sugar and throw accordingly that amount of insulin. But which insulin is there in the pump? That's very important. Because if you take a long acting insulin along with this kind of short acting like U500, both of them are having the culmination of effect in 24 hours. And that means 24 hours also you can have a, a you know hypoglycemia because together they are acting at that time. So uh, the pump is fine. It is giving you a wrap. You know, you don't have to remember that I have to take insulin. That's the idea about giving insulin pump. But at the same time, it's very, very risky because pump does not know that how much, uh, you know, uh, what time did you have meal. It's giving you at a particular destined amount of time. Like I said, smart pumps available in which they judge the uh, glucose level and they give accordingly. But at the same time, uh, very important is what kind of insulin is used in the pump. And what is its pharmacokinetic profile? That is also a very important thing. Not everything can be left over to the machines. These things, <clears throat> they are now used as pens, pen pills. So they are available now. You can keep them in the, at room temperature. This kind of insulin. Is, even for Lispro, they say the 10 to 15 minutes when there's an onset of action, which we really want. And its peak is there in 30 to 90 minutes. That means roughly in one, one hour or so, it's very, very short acting. And its duration staying for three, four hours is very, it's, it's, it's the ideal for calling short acting. Because this is what you want. You want that, you know, we remember that I just took this uh, rapidly acting insulin. Maximum effect will be in four hours. Maximum, it will stay for four hours. If even the short acting is staying on for 24 hours, you know, it is very difficult to titrate the next dose or the long acting. And for even for diabetologists, it becomes a little bothersome. So Lispro is very ideal because see, like I said, it starts at 10 to 15 minutes peaks at 30 to uh, 90 minutes and stays on for three to four hours. Now, if you ask me that, ma'am, how to remember all these things, uh, you don't. You just don't have to remember all these things. Just remember, like, list pros, very, very ideal. All right. So even if you write down, let's say, 30 to uh, 90 gigajiga, if you write down, uh, you know, half an hour to two hours or one to two hours, I'll take it. Okay. And so will be most of the uh, examiners because they themselves, uh, like I say, most of the time will not be remembering. Um, then you have, uh, insulin glucine. This is a combination. Okay. And again, it starts its action at 10 to 15 minutes, right? It peaks in mostly an hour. Okay. And then stays on to three to five hours again, which is very similar to Lispro. So mostly all of them have a profile in which they'll end it off by three to four hours. And that's what you want in rapidly acting. 